The events take place in Dahua Kingdom, Tangdu Prefecture. The heavenly barrier rises above the events taking place. On the outskirts between the abyss and the crowd of indignant people stands a young man. An aggressive crowd accuses the guy of colluding with demons and threatens him with death. After the threats, the guy is attacked by a magic barrier, from which he breaks down and falls into the abyss. He has a tired expression on his face, and blood is flowing from his mouth. The actions are transferred to a newborn baby wrapped in a yellow film. A young maid takes the child in her arms and informs her mistress that a boy has been born to her. The girl puts the screaming child on the bed of the exhausted mistress. The young mother turns to the child and gently passes her hand over his cheek, whispering the cherished words my child. However, her face is clouded by sadness, and she hands the newborn baby back to a girl named Chunner, asking to take care of Liu, her baby. Chunner makes her such a promise. The lady, hearing her answer, realized that it was time. She raises her hand to heaven promising to be together with her brother named Feng. But soon the hand falls exhausted on the bed. The servants turn to the master, interested in the fate of the second. They ask what they should do with the young master even after the death of the second mistress. The answer to them was the statement that the Liuo family has always valued martial skill. If the master really has the ability, then he should fight for his status. At sunset, with a newborn Liuo and in his arms, Chunner runs away from the House of Lords. In the wake, she hears only the words of the accusation of a dissolute life, because of which she no longer deserves to stay in the house. However, her face does not express sadness. Through tears of joy she begs the young gentleman not to cry anymore and assures him that now they are dependent only on each other. From now on, Chunner had to work hard to raise the young master. She mopped the floors in public spaces, swept the streets. After 16 years, the young master is trying to train his abilities. He sits in the lotus position and tries to make his magic circulate around his body. Unfortunately, he does not succeed and the energy riots, causing damage to the body of the carrier. The young man complains about his frail physique, blocked meridians and lack of talent for cultivation. He blames God for this. Soon, he still pulls himself together and admits that sitting at home and doing nothing is pointless. He has a lot of things ahead of him. He should not hope that he still remain the young master of his family. Then Lo leaves the house on business. He walks down a crowded street and sees other men training. The training masters look at him with contemptuous eyes. Some are whispering behind his back about what kind of trash he is, because he came to take a new technique. Others claim that this brat is still able to stand only because he is the grandson of the patriarch. They assume that this fact saved him from disgraceful exile from the Luo family because of mediocre talent. Still others scoff and say that they have heard that the young gentleman is engaged in the technique of the tide and has not mastered the first stage in 10 years. Everyone considers it useless, because even an ordinary martial artist would be able to break through in just three days with the cultivation of the tide technique. The discussion is interrupted by an exclamation from one of the trainees announcing the arrival of the chief instructor Liu Sen. At the same moment, the figure of a tall and strong blonde man rose above Liu. It was Liu San, the chief training instructor in the Liu family's outer hall. The young gentleman only had time to look at the instructor and at the same moment received a powerful blow with his right hand with concentrated energy, and then was thrown into the wall. Fog swirled around the chief instructor, and the remnants of energy still flickered in his hands. He contemptuously threw out that his son was a gifted genius, but he became a cripple, now low and has no right to be healthy if, in fact, he is a cripple. After which, Liu Sin turned around and left the training ground. Behind him, condemning speeches of students were heard that the chief instructor was behaving unreasonably, because he himself was the culprit of his own son's injuries due to cruel training. No matter how useless Luo Yi is, he is still the grandson of the patriarch. Luo San is just taking advantage of the fact that the patriarch is in seclusion and only inflicts more injuries on Luo Yi. But others object, because now Luo San is an expert who is at the eighth stage of the Hushan kingdom. Moreover, his father was punished by family law for collusion with a demon and no one would want to associate with an expert because of the brat. The trash deserved it. Bad weather broke out over the small house. Loud peals of thunder illuminated the room through the single window. In the room, on the bed was young Mr. Luo and unconscious. Chun prayed over him or asking him to wake up. She is eaten up by remorse, because she did not save Luo, so she will not be able to look into the eyes of his dead parents, as if hearing her prayers. Green flashes of energy rushed towards the house, penetrating into the room through the window and entering Liu Yi's unconscious body. Vortices of energy concentrate in the area of the guy's forehead and penetrate into consciousness, causing him pain. Chunner excitedly jumps over Mr. Liu Yi's body. A few days later, the guy wakes up, but something is wrong. He doesn't know where he is. His last memory is working overtime in the office. He understands that he died and got into someone else's body. Liu Yi's body. Memories of the disappeared Liu Yi come to his mind. But the sound of a smashing plate does not allow him to finally realize his position. He turns at the noise and sees an alarmed chunner. 
She is excited because her master has woken up and is fine, for which she immediately thanks God. Tears begin to flow from her voice, and her body involuntarily kneels in a prayer pose. She gently takes the master's hand. The young man is confused, so he asks if he has been reborn. Analyzing the memories, the guy realizes that the owner of the body has lived an even more useless life than himself. After all, Liu Yi was beaten to death by a simple instructor and endured 16 years of bullying. His thoughts are interrupted by Chun or a question about his well-being. Peering into the woman's face, the guy realizes that he has shared his fate with Lo. After all, he was also left an orphan, but the young master had Aunt Chun by his side, who took care of him all this time. Therefore, he immediately begins to calm Aunt Chun, assuring that he is fine and gently passing his hand over her face, wiping away the tracks of tears. In excess of feelings, Chun er embraces the young master. She accuses Liu Sen of mistreatment and offers Liu Yi more rest. In her opinion, Liu Sen would not have dared to do such a thing even with a hundred instructors if the second master had been alive. After her words, the guy understands that in this world the value of a person is determined by his fighting skills. Then he decides that he must become stronger than everyone else in order to live peacefully on. Besides, Liu Sen's reason was insufficient, which is why it is necessary to avenge the carrier. The chest fractured by the chief instructor quickly recovered, and the body itself became less fragile. In this world of cultivation, there is no limit to a person's strength. When he reaches the tenth stage of the Hushan realm, he can interact with heaven and earth, which will lead him to the innate realm. But this stage is not easy to achieve. Therefore, Lo decided that it was necessary to practice first. Combat techniques in the new world can be divided into five different types. Metal, wood, water, fire, earth. The previous owner of the body cultivated the Tide technique, which is one of the best techniques of the water attribute. According to his memories, the guy realized that because of the blocked meridians, the flow of the Tide technique caused great pain. Liu Yi moved on to practice and after a while felt the energy flows inside his body. After realizing the power, he broke through to the first stage of the Tide technique, from which clumps of water energy began to appear around his body. He realized that with rebirth, the body had changed. He can definitely get stronger now. In Daiyua Kingdom, Tangdu Prefecture, the huge Luo family has been living for more than a thousand years. Liu Yi, the patriarch's grandson and the son of Liu Tianfeng, was exiled to live in the servant's settlement. He, being in his room, trained the technique of the Tide, in connection with which energy spread throughout the room, filling every corner. He started from the bottom and in just three months was able to reach the fifth stage of the Tide technique, which was incredibly fast. Liu Yi had no doubt that the title of trash young master given to him by his entourage would soon disappear. However, after getting up from the bed, Liu Yi accidentally overheard the conversation of two mates. They were talking about him. In their opinion, he pretended to be sick after being beaten by Liu San. Liu Yi was not upset by what he heard, but analyzed his strength and capabilities. Having only reached the fifth stage, he would not be able to defeat Liu San, who is at stage 8. And the person who helped Liu San stay unpunished is an even higher level, and therefore stronger. The reason for the bad life of the previous owner of the body is in his father, who was punished by the rules of the family. Liu Tianfeng, Liu Yi's father, was the strongest of his generation, but due to collusion with a demon, he was thrown into the abyss and his body was never found. The shadow of his father's transgression also lies on Liu Yi, who now cannot trust anyone and is doomed to rely only on himself. Only students who have reached the fifth stage can take the higher tide techniques. This fact made Liu Yi think. It is necessary to obtain these techniques without revealing the available strength, because he has been training hard for three months in a row and must find a way to solve this problem. It doesn't matter that all his ideas didn't lead to anything good. In the pavilion for washing clothes, as always, women were engaged in washing clothes. For a similar lesson, Chunter went there. A wet rag flew into her face. Shocked by this, Chun drew a slit in the fabric. Er saw two servants of the Liu family's outer hall. They tried to force Chunter do extra work while insulting her. Poor Chunner did not know how to protect herself and only whispered softly that she had already done her part of the work and could be free for today. She was objected that they were higher in rank than her, so they decide when her working day is over. One of the servants pointed out that Lady Honger, the daughter of the sixth madam and the wearer of the sixth madam's clothes, was standing next to him. It needs to be washed and then Chunner can go home. The young master's maid only said that her master was ill and she should prepare medicine for him, asking him to have mercy on her. However, the second woman asked angrily about how a sick disabled person could be more important than the daughter of the sixth madam. More Chunner couldn't stand her it. Her body was seized with anger and she shouted in Lady Honger's face to stop saying nasty things towards young mister. Lady Honger activated the flaming fist technique, intending to hit Chunner. 
but she was interrupted by a voice full of anger, which informed her that she wanted to die once she touched Aunt Chun. After that, Lady Honger's body was pierced by the Luo Yitai technique, causing her to fall backwards to the ground. Chunner was not even touched by the technique, although she was a few centimeters away from Lady Honger. Chunner, through the reflections of the techniques, saw the body of the young master. His right arm was completely engulfed in energy. Liu Yi then concentrated the energy in his palm. The startled Lady Honger hysterically screamed that he would not go unpunished and the sixth madam would find him. Liu Yi only indifferently said that it would not stop him, after which he struck the last blow. Lady Honger experienced extreme pain all over her body, and blood flowed from her mouth. After such a blow, Lady Honger will never get up again. The servant of the outer hall of the Luo family quickly realized that Liu Yi was no longer the same miserable trash, so he began to ask for mercy and bow at his feet. Liu Yi decided not to get his hands dirty and walked past, saying that if he told anyone about what had happened, then Lady Honger's death would overtake him. The young gentleman went to the crying Aunt Chun, saying with a kind smile that no one would touch her anymore. Then they both left, leaving the reflecting servant behind. The servant was thinking that Lady Honger was at the fourth stage of the flaming palm technique, but could not even touch the young master. Apparently the wind is blowing in a different direction now. During the conversation, Aunt Chun asked not to reveal the secret about the young master's strength, because she is already old and she doesn't care what happens to her, but she doesn't want anything to happen to Liu Yi. Liu Yi assured her that he would sort everything out. He reflected that Liu Yang, the witness of the brawl, was not stupid enough to tell anyone about what had happened. The Daiyua kingdom is very strict, so even a useless prince can't object to a servant. A month later, Liu Yi trained the tide technique again. He understood that in order to reach the sixth level, he needed a technique of a similar level. It remains only to figure out how to get it. Outside, he met Liu Yang, who greeted the young gentleman with a respectful bow. Liu Yi, seeing him, invited him into the house. After they entered the room, he asked the servant what he needed and why he had come to him. Liu Yang explained that he had dumped Honger's body down to the foot of the mountains. This did not surprise Liu Yi, so he repeated the question again. Liu Yang, falling to his knees, begged forgiveness for the bad attitude in the past and swore that he would follow Liu Yi's orders. The rogue servant realized that while the Grand Patriarch was in seclusion, Liu Tian Ba's temporary party was in power, which was not on good terms with Liu Tian Fang. The young master will try to hide the power until the patriarch comes out of seclusion for six months. So he will need help. This is a great opportunity to take a higher place for Luo Liang. After thinking about what was said, Liu Yi asked for the scriptures on the sixth and seventh techniques of the Tai, promising rewards. Liu Liang, deciding that this was a test, promised to get these scriptures in three days. Liu Liang immediately turned to the keeper of the techniques in the inner hall. The guardian asked why he needed the tide technique of the 6th and 7th levels, because he cultivates a completely different technique. Liu Liang also came up with a story that his nephew had reached the 5th level, but cultivation had stopped. In order for him to continue developing, Liu Liang found Brother Hong. Honga also warned that getting technicians from the inner to the outer hall is punishable by death. But Liu Liang swore to him that he himself would follow his nephew, who, by the way, does not even live in Tangdu. He will learn the technique and immediately leave and no one will know anything. He takes full responsibility and will not mention Brother Hong. Then Hong I concentrated his energy in his hand, forming a small ball. He explained that this is a condensing Kai pill that will work for six months. Liu Liang accepted the ball and promised to repay the debt to Brother Hong. After that, Hong left for an hour. After a while, he returned with two scriptures, warning that the scriptures should not be lost or spoiled. Liu Liang promised to return the favor in gratitude while thinking that such a speedy completion of the task requires more favor from the young master. Liu Liang provided the scrolls with techniques he had obtained to young Mr. Liu, which he was extremely happy about. Moreover, he once again swore allegiance to the young master for the rest of his life, promising to carry out any order that comes from the deprived order without unnecessary questions. In gratitude for the assignment, Liu Yi allowed Liu Liang to no longer kneel when he was in the young master's room. Liu Yi asked if Liu Liang had really suspended Aunt Chun from work. An immediate response was received that Luo Liang could not force the young master's most precious aunt to work. He also complained that this was the only thing he could do for Chunner because of its limited capabilities. Liu Yi praised the servant for his work, but asked him not to overdo it anymore, and also did not allow him to come to the house from now on, the master would find him himself. Luo Liang immediately realized that this might attract unnecessary attention and agreed that it was careless on his part. He agreed and left. Three months later, looking at the snowy landscape outside the window, Liu Yi reflected that the sixth and seventh stages were really difficult. It took him three months to master the stages up to the middle of the seven. There are six months left until the start of this year's talent tournament. 
At the tournament, he will need to prove his skills and enter the Palace of Martial Skills winners. He assumed that he would be in danger until he reached the end of the seventh stage. After he passes the Haoshan realm and reaches the innate realm, his time of revenge will come. In his mind, Liu Yi turned to the previous owner of the body, promising him to take revenge on everyone who mocked him and not spare anyone. Thoughts were interrupted by Chunner's conversion. She asked if the young master remembered what day it was. Liu Yi replied that today was the day of his mother's death. Aunt Chun confirmed his guesses and asked him to go to the grave of Miss and the second master to give them prayers. Chunner and Liu Yi went to the outskirts of the village to pay tribute to Miss and second master. Kneeling before the makeshift death altar, Liu Yi wondered if he could be considered their son. Even if this is not the case, he still has nothing against worshipping them. Crying Chunner asked how they were doing. She complained that Bai Chun also wanted to go to them to continue serving. However, the young master is still too young, and she can't leave him and go to them. Chunner cried bitterly again and wailed that she couldn't take enough care of him and let her owners down. Liu Yi helped her to get up from her knees and opened an umbrella over the crying ant to cover her about the falling snow. New Year's Eve, the annual festival of the Lo family. The main street is decorated with lanterns, confetti. There was a festive atmosphere everywhere. The whole Liu family was walking past the crowd of cheering people. The Liuo family has become the strongest in all of Chandu for a reason. Because the lords of the family branch look noble and dignified. Jewelry and music only emphasize the honor of the family. Liu Yi was in the crowd watching and was surprised to notice that the festival was really lively. A noise interrupted his thoughts. Turning his head, he saw Liu Hao, the second son of Liu Tian Bass. He was on horseback, dispersing the crowd on the street. Behind him, his henchmen were also riding horses. Liu Yi remembered that it was they who had bullied him in his previous life. He was seized with a wild desire for revenge, so Liu Yi, unnoticed by everyone, directed his energy through his right leg into the ground, thereby forming an ice crust that quickly spread along the road and firmly embedded in the horse's hooves, preventing her from moving. All the horses threw off their riders in surprise. Liu Hao tried to get up after the fall, but he failed and his legs simply parted in different directions on the ice, forcing Liu Hao to fall again. He was angry, and his servants were trying to lift him up. Liu Yi remarked with cheerful indifference that this was just the beginning and the time of full reckoning was waiting for him. Then Liu Yi went to the obelisk of the ancestors of the Liu family. There he saw the head of the family and the elders. It was the patriarch of the family and his grandfather. His prowess and strength could be seen even with the naked eye. He deserves to be called the head of the family. With his aura alone, he silenced everyone. This is possible only for the owners of great power. His figure towered majestically above the crowd and the golden robe only emphasized his status. Next to the patriarch of the family was Luo Tianba. Even after the death of his brother, Luo Tianfeng, he encouraged people to drink and celebrate, because they were always fighting for power among themselves. Liu Yi reflected that if his strength was revealed, then Luo Tianba would be the first to worry. The Luo family is fighting for power with each other, but he is not interested in it. He planned to reach the innate realm and rid himself of the drama of the Luo family. The head of the family spoke about the fact that 29 generations have passed since their ancestor Liu Qingfeng came to Tandu. Today they pay tribute to their common ancestor on the last day of the old year. He wished that the glory of the family would continue to be passed down from generation to generation. In honor of this, he said to make a sacrifice. The victim was a demonic animal, Liger. He was a huge creature resembling a lion, his claws so sharp that they could cut a golden donut like tofu. He was carried in a cage by four servants. It turned out that this is an adult kind of animal and was a first-class victim for the festival. When the cage was lowered, the head of the family ordered the door to be open. It happened in the blink of an eye, and the beast was outside, on the street and immediately tried to attack the patriarch. Liger did not have time to do anything, as the patriarch's energy began to swirl around him in a jump. Liu Yi only had time to be surprised. This simply could not exist in reality. Is this power the power that is beyond the innate realm? Meanwhile, Liu Tianba's sword, surrounded by his energy, cut through the air and dealt the last blow to Liger, cutting off his head. Liu Yi was amazed. Complete union with the sword showed that Liu Tianba was at the peak of the Haoshan realm and just a step away from the innate realm. Meanwhile, the patriarch's energy enveloped the beast's head with a fiery sphere and lifted it from the ground. He asked the audience to kneel and bow to the ancestors. After that, he, along with the animal's head, rushed into the heavens. At that moment, Liu Yi realized that this was the very power for which he needed to improve. He must surpass the head and rise to the top of the world. The head of the Liu family announced the start of the annual tournament. Those who have reached level 5 and above can go to the inner hall. The level check is as follows. There is a treasure of the Liuo family memory stone, with which the level of strength is measured. With a single swipe of his palm, he can determine the level of strength based on the destruction of the palm mark. The inspector called Liuo Feng, 
who struck one blow with the destructive golden palm branch technique on the memory stone. The inspector declared that this blow caused damage equal to 5 and 4 inches in depth, which means that the technique was at the fifth level, the initial stage. Liu Feng happily left, and another participant took his place. All this time, Liu Yi was standing in line, waiting for his turn. Suddenly a hand was placed on his shoulder and a sarcastic voice asked if he was the 23rd brother. Liu Yi turned around and saw the already familiar Liu Hao. The latter noticed that Liu Yi had grown up as the family had improved the servants' food. He wanted to laugh with his sixes, but they didn't let him do it. They were prevented by none other than Liu Binian, Liu Yi's cousin. She was the daughter of Liu Tianchuang's second uncle and one of the few members of the Liu family who treated him well. However, after coping with surprise, Liu Hao continued to mock, saying that even a year after their last meeting, Liu Yi continues to hide behind women's skirts. Liu Binian tried to silence him, but she was interrupted by Liu Yi, asking the dear 17th brother how he was doing on such how many days. He also wished him to be more careful on the way somewhere. There are whispers from behind about how he dares to talk to the 17th brother like that. What's wrong with this little brat? And also that he was beaten half to death with one blow by Liu San, so he lost his last sanity. Liu Hao, in turn, took the hint and was mad as hell. He hissed through his teeth clenched in anger. What did you say? Liu Yi simply replied that he had heard about what happened yesterday, because he was worried about it. Energy began to gather around Luo Hao. He said that he was obliged to teach Luo both manners and the correct address to his elders, but he was prevented. Luo Binian blocked his way by throwing him to calm down his ardor, as the annual tournament is taking place today. Luo Hao doesn't want to incur the wrath of the elders. Luo Hao agreed, but warned that he was releasing Luo and only today, but from tomorrow he would have to beware of the 17th brother. Liu Yi thanked Liu Binian from the bottom of his heart, to which the latter replied that she, as an older sister, should protect him. She asked Liu Yi to beware of the vicious Liu Hao in the future. Liu Yi just noticed that there are family rules that even Liu Hao wouldn't dare break. Liu Binian only marveled at how confident Liu Yi had become. Meanwhile, Liu Chanba announced that the evaluation of the main branch bloodline has been completed, now. But he was interrupted by Liu Yi, who noticed that he had not been checked yet. The crowd around him laughed, throwing mud at him. But all this was interrupted by the decision of the patriarch of the family, loudly announcing that he could pass the test. Liu Chamba was indignant, but gave up and invited Liu Yi to the memory stone. Liu Binian tried to stop him by asking if he was sure. Liu Yi only assured that everything would be fine. Liu Yi walked up to the stone and concentrated all the energy in his right hand, after which he struck. The inspector announced that the depth is 5 and 3 inches, tidal arts. Liu Yi is at the 5th level, the middle stage. People started talking that at 16 to get the 5th level of the stage is brilliant, which means he is not a loser at all. Liu Yi was also praised by the examiner. Liu Yi was thinking that all this glory should belong to the loser Liu Yi. Having dropped the title of garbage, he still hid the cards up his sleeve. That's not all. Liu Chanba was at a loss how this loser could become so powerful for his age. But the question remained unanswered. And he announced aloud that the assessment of the main family tree of the branch has been completed and the children of side families will be evaluated. Meanwhile, Liu Binian hurried to Liu Yi. She was happy and kept asking how he was able to reach such a level and why he didn't tell his little sister. She was in awe, and Liu thought about the need to find a plausible excuse. Liu Yi told Liu Binian that when he was beaten by Liu San six months ago, an old man appeared to him on the verge of life and death and forced him to eat some strange pill. After that, his injuries not only fully recovered, but also stopped having problems with improvement. Liu Binian was surprised. Is there such a pill that helps to reach the fifth level out of nothing in six months? Meanwhile, Liu Yi thought that he had incredible support, because of which no one could do anything wrong to him. He needs to reach the innate realm and then all those who look down on him will pay. The ringing of the bell interrupted the flow of thought. Liu Tanba announced that at the end of this year, in addition to four members from the main family and twelve members from the side family who have reached the fifth level will be able to enter the inner palace. Those who have not reached the fifth level will participate in an elimination match. After these words, a girl in white flew into the arena. Liu Yi, who is watching the battle, noted that it is more exciting than those that can be seen on TV. The girl in the arena effortlessly and single-handedly scattered everyone who tried to compete with her and became the only winner. This aroused Liu Yi's respect and he decided to himself that such a force should be reckoned with. Liu Chanba announced the end of this year's tournament and asked everyone who received the right to enter the inner hall to gather in the elite combat hall of the military palace. Liu Yi went to the inner palace, where he saw Liu San at the entrance. Liu Yi thought with annoyance that enemies often intersect. Liu San's face was distorted by a grimace of hatred. He couldn't understand why Liu Yi's life was saved by some miracle pill, but no one saved his son. Liu San's son's talent was better than Liu Yi's. The guards also did not let Liu inside, arguing that the rabble had nothing to do in the inner hall. 
Liu Yi asked Liu Osan why he was still considered a rabble, even though he had qualified. Liu Osan turned away, ignoring the question. Liu Yi realized that nothing could be achieved by talking, so he began to concentrate his energy in his body, justifying that he did not want to do this. At the same moment, the swords in the guard's hands flew in all directions, as did the warriors themselves. Liu Osan asked in a rage how he dared to raise his hand against the iron guard. After that, he ordered his soldiers to attack Liu Yi. The fighters obeyed the order. One of the soldiers explained that those who attack the Iron Guard, regardless of their status, should be executed. The fact that Luo is a direct descendant of the family does not give him the right to act at his discretion. Liu Yi interrupted the speaker, saying that they were the violators of the rules. He had earned the qualification to enter the inner martial palace by reaching the strength of the middle of the fifth stage and the whole Luo family knew about it. However, the guards dared to go against the family rules and try to stop him. The soldiers of the Iron Guard were given powers by the Luo family, but is that why they should become Luo Sen's dogs? It is precisely such wars that should be ashamed of the abuse of powers. The loud triad was interrupted by Luo San, who went down to Luo Yi. His entire body was enveloped in fiery energy. He asked Luo Yi what he was talking about. Liu Yi, after assessing the opponent's strength, realized that he was using the golden core technique, the beginning of the eighth level. He, trying to provoke Liu San, called the latter a dog and asked him about his intentions to fight. The brawl was interrupted by Liu Chanba. Both opponents felt the force surrounding his body. Liu Yi thought maliciously that Liu Chanba only wanted to be a good person after watching the show for so long. He just wanted to check on Liu Yi. Liu Chanba asked what was going on. Liu Yi explained that the old dog Liu Sen did not let him into the palace, although today Liu was given permission to enter the elite combat hall and asked to assess Liu Chanba's situation. Liu Tamba turned to Liu San in order to find out if Liu Yi was telling the truth. The instructor began to deny, saying that Liu Yi wanted to enter the gym without saying a word. Liu Tamba continued to tell instead of Liu San that in this regard. The guards decided to stop him, but Liu Yi seriously wounded them, so Liu San intervened. Liu Yi chuckled, thinking that they were a wonderful pair of actors who wanted to cancel his qualification. He immediately retorted that the first thing he said when he came to the inner palace was that he called the third elder. He also accused Liu San of not respecting Uncle Liu Yi, Lo Chanba, which is why he is lying. Despite his age, Liu Chanba can see the lies in Liu San's eyes. Liu Chanba only irritably noted to himself that this child, Liu Yi, has become too smart and now knows how to shift the blame to another person with the help of cunning words. Right now, he's using his name to silence Liu Chanba. Liu Chanba concluded that Liu Yi should not be underestimated now. Aloud, he said that the situation happened only because of a small misunderstanding. So he asked Liu San to listen to people from now on. He asked Liu Yi to follow him. Along the snow, covered path there was a column of people, masters who had received qualifications, and the improvised caravan of Liu San was closing. He told the masters that as soon as they entered the inner martial palace, they would be able to choose and study the martial technique from the holy hall. The elite battle hall is the core of the Liu family, as it has been storing scriptures for thousands of years. Just choosing a scripture from there is already a great success. Approaching the doors of the inner martial palace, Liu Tamba introduced himself and explained that he had brought the disciples to choose the scriptures. When the doors opened, the disciples saw one of the elders. Liu Tamba bowed politely when the elder asked about the patriarch's health. Liu Tamba assured that everything was fine with the head of the family and thanked the elder for his care. The elder fixed his gaze on Liu He. This look made Luo feel uneasy, as it seemed to him that the elder saw through him. The elder just chuckled and muttered that the seedlings are not so bad this time. After that, he turned around and went into the hall, telling Tamba that they could enter in for the latter to tell them about the rules. Luo Tamba immediately began to execute the order. Leading the recruits through the combat hall, Luo Tamba said that they were on the first floor of the Hall of Holy Warriors, which is divided into six main categories depending on the nature of the technique. Everyone can recognize an attribute based on its color. Arrivals can only be on the ground floor and no scripture should leave the walls of the hall. Novice masters can rewrite the necessary information. Everyone has only two hours to do this. In addition, in the future, to access the Hall of Holy Warriors, you need to confirm your qualifications. In this regard, the first technique chosen by the master is extremely important. He once again warned that the entrance to the second floor is prohibited. Liu Yi, who was near the stairs to the second floor, felt a strong energy aura and realized that the elder was guarding this particular entrance. Liu Yi ignored this force and walked over to the bookcase with the writing. Liu Yi understood that his title technique had already reached the peak of the 7th level and he needed the 8th level scripture to develop further. However, after starting to read the scriptures, Liu Yi realized that there were only scriptures up to the 7th level on the 1st floor. Perhaps the 8th level scriptures are on the 2nd floor. 
He understood that with his current strength, if he tried to climb to the second floor, he would die. After a little more thought, he decided to cultivate another technique. As he passed the shelves, he read the titles, The Cloudy Arrangement of Palm Trees, The Body of Flowing Light, The Holy Scripture of the Azure Sword, Ethereal Flowing Rain. The last name interested him. Liu Yi reflected that if he could comprehend the ethereal rain stream technique to the third level, he would be able to understand a little bit the true meaning of the water pole, and this technique is one of the most powerful in the world. It is strange that such a powerful technique is located on the first floor. After reading the scroll, Liu Yi realized that this was only the first level of technology. Liu Yi decided to focus on other, more useful techniques. Two hours later, Liu Tanba informed the novice masters about the end of time. He said that in two months the masters will go to Cloudflow Island for training. Liu Tanba advised the newcomers to hone the skills they had acquired in the Sacred Hall of Warriors during these two months, so as not to disgrace the honor of the Liu family during the battle on Cloudflow Island. Liu was interested in the wording about the battle on the island. He thought they would be fighting for something. After leaving the inner palace, Liu Yu was greeted with a bow by the servants lined up in a row. Aunt Chun and Liu Liang were already on their way to meet him. Aunt Chun explained that they were in the Scorching Sky Pavilion, which had become open to Liu Yi. Liu Binyan's sister also came to greet and congratulate Liu Yi. Binyan noticed that this pavilion is usually given to the second generation of the family. The third generation hardly managed to visit here. Liu Yi offered Binyan to share the pavilion, but the latter refused to accept such a generous gift. Liu Yi understood that his recent achievements had calmed those who were higher up in the family. Meanwhile, Binyan asked about the technique that Liu Yi had chosen. The latter replied that he was interested in the sword technique. Binyan immediately asked for permission to give the first sword to Liu and to improve his technique. Liu Yi thanked his sister. Sister Binyan warned Liu Yi that all the servants of this pavilion were appointed from above and could be spies. So she asked Liu Yi to be more careful. Liu Yi thanked his sister for the warning. In the night, Liu Yi went to the grave before Tian Feng so that he would not be seen by extra eyes in the residence. He was sure that no one would go there. However, as he approached, he saw that a lonely figure was sitting near his father's grave. Approaching her, he was surprised to realize that it was the patriarch. He was waiting for Liu Yi. The head of the family asked if Liu Yi hated him, because, as a grandfather, he did not fulfill his role. Liu Yi only shrugged his shoulders, noting that he does not remember him as a grandfather, therefore he does not feel hatred. But he understands that the status of patriarch imposes its obligations on a person that he can understand. The patriarch was satisfied with these words. So he reminded Liu Yi that the latter, no matter what, still remains a member of the Liu family and handed Liu a scroll with scriptures. Taking it in his hands, Liu Yi realized that it was a tied technique from the 8th to the 10th level. The patriarch explained that although he did not know the technique by which Liu hid the true power, because even he, the head of the family, could not see it at first glance, but asked to improve it, Liu Yi should always be on his guard. Liu Yi only admired the knowledge and observation of the head, although nothing else was expected from the patriarch of the millennial family. When the patriarch left, Liu Yi immediately started training. His mind was swarming with thoughts. In this family, the rules are so strict that even the patriarch needed to find such an unsociable place to give the scripture to his grandson. Liu Yi intended to destroy all evidence of the patriarch's presence in this place, so as not to bring problems on the latter. After two months, Liu Yi trained the Azure Sword technique. All efforts were in vain. After the end of the first level, the light of the seven swords should spread to erase the sharp light rays. But it did not work out for him. Liu Yi cultivated this technique to the seventh level, but he couldn't do it. He didn't understand what he was doing wrong. Standing in the rain, he thought about technology. The thought came to his mind, what if the flow, rain stream, ethereal flowing rain stream will help him? The ethereal current stream is rain. Small drops of energy flowing down from above and forming a large lake of energy. Each drop fills the lake and makes it even bigger and stronger. Liu Yi realized that he was on the trail and everything would work out for him. The rain stream and the sword stream, Kai combine to form the strongest concentration of energy in the sword. Liu Yi strikes them on the training stone, turning it into ice, training novice masters in another part of the forest. Hearing a loud explosion, turn around at the noise, trying to find the source. Meanwhile, Liu Yi realizes that this is the true power of the Azure Sword technique. Surely fate favors him, which is why it started raining to tuck him in the right direction. Liu Yi's next goal is to achieve the truth of the water technique, which no one has managed to learn so far. Liu Yi realized how terrifying the Azure Sword technique was, as he had used up all his stamina using it. You need to be ready to use it next time. But when he turned around, he heard other masters trying to find the source of the noise. He was surprised that he had attracted so much extra attention. It's not the time for exposure, so he hurriedly hides in the thicket of the forest. 
The novice masters who arrived at the noise saw only showering stones that turned into crystal ice. This could be done by someone who has the attributes of water not lower than the seventh level. The coach corrected that this could be done by someone who is in the innate realm. Everyone was shocked. There is another expert who is at the same level as the patriarch, Liu Binian, who was among the arrivals, offered to inform the family that there was an expert with such power in the back of the mountains. Liu Yi's meal was interrupted by Liu Binian. She asked Lo and where he had been all day. Liu Yi replied that he had been cultivating in the lowlands of the mountain. Liu Binian was surprised and asked if he was at the back of the mountain. Liu Yi explained that he had not been there and asked what had happened. The sister explained that there was an unknown expert in that territory who was in the innate realm. Liu Yi was surprised, an expert in the innate realm. He understood that Binian was talking about him, but he was not in the innate realm. He asked why they thought that the person who infiltrated the family's territory was an expert in the innate realm. Binian explained that the 13th elder who was with her told her that the innate aura revolves around the surrounding. Liu Yi realized that Binian was talking about a flow that would help to understand the truth of the technique. You can't learn this feeling verbally. Only feel it yourself. It will help Liu Yi to reach the innate realm after he reaches the peak of the Hongshan realm. Liu Yi asked how the family was going to deal with the stranger. Binian explained that the seed has not done anything yet, only advised not to go to that part of the mountain too often. The sister also reminded that on March 5th, Liu Yi and Liu Binian are going to Cloudflow Island, so it is necessary to improve the technique as much as possible until then. Liu Yi promised to work hard. On the 5th of March, Binian and Liu Yi arrived at the Cross of the Ras Sand, at the port from where the ships depart for Cloud Stream Island, a large number of people were already standing on the square. Liu Yi was confused. Why are there so many people? Binian replied that in the Liu family, those who have not reached the 8th level and have not reached the age of 30 should be trained on Cloudflow Island every year. Over time, the number of people is growing. Liu Yi inquired about the fact that they would still be standing here. Binian explained that he, as a beginner, had already been assigned to a small group, to which she leads him. Liu Yi and Binian went to their group. Upon arrival, they were met by the captain of the group, the 15th brother named Liu Yu. He introduced himself and asked to be called Brother Yu. He also wanted to introduce him to everyone present, but he was interrupted by a bald guy. The guy said that there was no need to introduce him. He was Lo Sing and if Lo respected him, he could call him Brother Sing, but if he didn't respect him, he could call him bald. Liu Yu laughed and remarked that this was Brother Sing's whole point. He was too straightforward and was the vice captain of the group. He also asked if it was inconvenient for Liu. Liu Yi replied that he liked Brother Sing's straightforwardness and had no objections and asked him to call him baby next time. Brother Sing laughed and admitted that he liked Liu Yi, so if the latter has any questions, he can safely contact him. Liu Yi wished everyone to get along this year. This year, the third uncle will lead the squad. The only one who is close to his uncle is his son, Liu Yan. Uncle also gave the order to the first five groups to go on board the first ship on their own. So the seating began. Liu Yi was in the third group, so he also followed on board the first ship. After all the groups boarded, the uncle gave the order to leave for the island. Liu Yi was watching the sea surface of the water when Sister Binian called out to him. She noticed that Liu Hao was also on their ship and because of his bad temper, he could not come to terms with what Liu Yi had told him at home. He did not have the courage to take revenge on Liu Yi, but now that they had recovered to Cloudflow Island, he could harm Liu Yi and understood that the island is very dangerous, where everyone can be maimed or even killed. Binian strongly recommended that Liu Yi always be with someone nearby so that Liu Hao could not bring trouble. Liu Yi thanked his sister and, to distract her, asked how big the ocean was. Cheerful Binian replied that there is territorial water within 500 kilometers from the city, and outside 500 kilometers from them there is external territorial water. Cloudflow Island is located near the borders of territorial waters. Few people know what the border of external territorial waters looks like. Legend has it that there are demonic beasts in those places that move freely, since a person is forbidden to enter there. Those territories have been restless lately. So, during the release of the Sioux family, they met a lizard beast of the ninth level. Binion expressed hopes that this trip would go smoothly. Liu Yi was thinking at this time that when he reached the level of the innate realm, he would travel to meet martial artists and see various magical animals. Liu Yi was training in the cabin of the ship. He was thrown against the wall. In the confusion, he heard shouts from the deck. A demonic beast has invaded the ship. Liu Yi was in amazement and, running out onto the deck, he saw a huge one snake. It was comparable in size to the size of the ship. Pointwise, he attacked the decks and destroyed them, breaking the wooden beams. Another blow fell on the ship in which Liu Yi was. People from the deck tried to escape. Among them was Liu Binian. Due to the destruction, Binion's leg got stuck and she was unable to leave the ship. Meanwhile, the snake noticed that the victim was in no hurry to escape, so preparing for a jerk, the snake rushed to the girl. 
Meanwhile, Liu Yi ran to save his sister, hitting the beam with his hand and shattering the tree. He freed Binion's leg, and on time, because after a split second in the place where the girl was, there was a monster's head. Realizing the mistake, the snake rushed after Luo Yi and Binion, but he was prevented by the fiery energy. A fiery stream hit the snake right in the snout, throwing the beast back. Luo Yi noticed that third uncle Luo Tianzing, engulfed by his energy at an incredible speed, was moving towards the beast. Everyone was sure that the third uncle with the fire technique of the ninth level would defeat the demonic spawn. With a precise blow, Liu Tianzing struck under the snake's head and ordered all combat-ready masters to block the animal. The masters simultaneously applied their techniques on the monster, forcing it to retreat. All the mentors rejoiced, because the third uncle was able to defeat the monster. Liu realized at this time, if there are so many strong masters in the Liu family, then how many masters are there in the whole world? He definitely needs to reach the pinnacle of technology to conquer the world. Meanwhile, they ships have already reached Cloudflow Island. The island was a mist-shrouded mountain. It is here that they will have to live for a year. Having moored, the masters descended to the ground. The island was overgrown with trees. The seniors saw off the newcomers, showing in which direction the Luo family camp was located. Novice masters were warned that if they were wounded, they would need to return to the camp in order not to die. The camp was a small village consisting of five huge tents. They were guarded by guards. Liu Yi asked his sister who the guard belonged to. Liu Binian explained that these are soldiers of the Dahua country, since Liu Yi's family is not the only one who trains on the island. Binian was immediately placed on a couch and sent to a doctor. Binian was too worried about Liu Yi, so she asked Liu Yi to look after him. The latter agreed. Meanwhile, the third uncle gave each of the nailed tiger dragon pill, after which he offered to look around and assess the surrounding situation. Liu Yi knew that the tiger dragon pill was necessary so that in half a year, a martial artist who was in the Haoshan kingdom could reach the next stage. Luo decided for himself that as soon as he reached the ninth stage, he would immediately eat a pill in order to easily reach the tenth stage. Liu explained to his group that during the first three months they would not take missions, but would train techniques while fighting demonic beasts of the fifth and sixth level. The group moved towards the forest, but suddenly Liu Yu stopped the team. He warned that there are demonic beasts of the fifth level ahead, but there are a lot of them. It is necessary not to anger or attract the attention of all animals. Then he felt one of the demonic beasts coming towards them. The master saw a monster that looked like a wild boar. Liu Yu informed the group that there was a bristly boar in front of them, a demonic beast of the fifth entry level. The beast is not fast, but its defense is not weak, and the weak point of the animal was the eyes. Liu Yu asked if the masters were confident in their strength. Liu Yi understood that he could not retreat and not participate in the first battle with the demonic demon but no one should know that his strength is much higher than everyone imagines. He would only have to use techniques of the fifth intermediate level. Liu Yi came out of his hiding place and was noticed by a boar. From the fury of the beast, smoke came out of its nose and, pointing its sharp tusks towards Liu Yi, it ran towards him, gaining speed. Liu Yi concentrated the energy around his body and sword, attacking the boar first. He jumped onto the monster's back, moving behind the boar. The beast bucked sharply and struck Liu Yi with a U-turn. Energy began to concentrate around the beast. Liu Yi realized that it was bad. Attacked by the demonic boar, Liu Yi was retreating backwards. He saw the demonic energy of the beast directed towards him with an aggressive intent to attack. Liu fell from the boar's jump, but managed to transfer his energy to his legs, keeping the boar's tusks away from his body. He pushed the beast aside and jumped back himself, increasing the distance between them. Liu Yi realized that the tidal technique had affected the fight. Liu Yi reflected that the skull was too dense. He would not be able to strike. By transferring the energy into the sword, Liu Yi delivered the final blow to the animal, defeating it. Liu Yi came out of hiding, grabbing Liu Yi's arm to make him run. He explained that the boar growled before dying, which attracted the attention of other demonic beasts. Liu Yi warned that it was necessary to cut the airways so that the animal could not make any sounds. Liu Yi offered to show how it is necessary to fight with animals in order to minimize strength and losses. Liu Yi saw a demonic fox near a pond. Unbeknownst to the beast, he crept up behind her, striking her neck with his sword. The fox only managed to concentrate the fiery energy and release it from her mouth, but it was too late. The novice masters watching from the shelter rejoiced at Liu Yu's victory. Liu Yu was shocked. Liu Yu needed only eight breaths to defeat the animal. Liu Yu wouldn't be able to defeat him even if he was at the eighth level. Liu Yu asked if Liu understood how to fight the demonic beast. Liu Yi replied that animals rely on their instincts. You need to use the environment and these instincts, then it will not be difficult to defeat them. Liu Yi confirmed his guesses, but clarified that this requires experience. Liu Yi has talent, now experience is needed to succeed. Liu Yi explained that the technique he demonstrated is one of many that can be used to hunt. 
These few months are necessary for honing the skills of young masters. After his words, the novice masters began to train their hunting skills with diligence. Three days later, while at the Luo family camp, Lu Yu announced Binyun's recovery. From now on, they can take missions as a full-fledged third team. Inspired, Liu Xing asked what kind of mission they were going to take. What level of beast would they hunt? Liu Yu replied that their next prey would be a demonic beast at the peak of the 7th level Night Panther. As soon as the group catches her, she must return to the camp with her head. The beast has great speed. Binyan objected. Wouldn't the speed of the beast be an obstacle to capture? Liu Yu assured that the beast is always a beast and with a plan to catch it will be easy. Inspired by this response, the team went hunting. No one noticed that two people were watching them from a tree. It was Luo Tan Zing and Luo Tan Chen. Luo Tan Zing asked Luo Tan Chen not to harm the others while executing Luo Tanba's order to eliminate Luo. The second one reassured Luo Tan Zing that everything would be fine. Being in a cave, hiding from the torrential rain, Liu reasoned that although the island is called Cloud Creek, but such rain was atypical for him. They, a few days later, reached the shelter of the Night Panther. Liu even managed to come up with a plan that he was going to discuss with the group. He explained that the Night Panther is a beast of the seventh rank and below. In order to defeat it, you need to use water attributes that will limit its mobility. Junior Sister Yun, Dixing Yi, Zio Yi, Kui We will have to slow down the beast since they have cultivated the tidal technique. After slowing down, Ruer and Izuner must use the root technique to catch the beast. Zio Yang will use the earth bending technique to stun the animal. Meanwhile, Liu Yu himself and Luo Zion will take up positions to deliver the final blow. Everyone was in awe of Liu Yu's plan and agreed with him. Meanwhile, Liu Yi noticed that for eight days their group was being followed by unknown people. He realized that they were chasing Liu Yi himself. He wondered who was following him, Liu Tan Zing or Liu Tan Chen. In any case, if Liu Yi comprehends the fluid body technique, then he will be able to defeat anyone. He planned to spend this night in training and if he succeeds, then Liu will have a chance to survive. Liu Yi left the cave and headed into the depths of the forest. Liu Yi trained all night. He understood that in their world there are those who live thanks to water, and there are those who control water. Lightning steps are steps formed with the help of lightning and help to move in space at lightning speed. However, they absorb too much Kai energy, so they can only be used as a last resort. The next morning, the whole group gathered near the nest of the night panther. Liu Yu signaled that he would go first to explore the habitat of the beast and ordered the rest to wait on the spot. Meanwhile, Luo Tian Chen and his men were watching them. He needed to remove Luo Yi, but they never got the chance. Liu Yi was constantly with the group, so it was not possible to attack him. They will have to proceed with Plan B. He ordered his son, Dinger, to wait on the spot and even if he was delayed, not to take any action. Tian Chen decided that he would be able to protect the group. That's why he decided to use the spiritual invigorating pill on the demonic beast to gain full control over the mind of the beast. Liu Yi should be proud of having forced Tian Chen to use such a pill and die with honor. After that, he launched the pill into the purple harpy's body. Using a secret technique, he recruited the harpy's mind. But this enslavement was temporary and Tian Chen remembered it. He was confident that he would have enough time to kill Liu Yi. He planned to use the harpy as a means of transportation. Meanwhile, Liu Yu was in the cave of the Night Panther. The team was excited. He was inside for too long and didn't come out. After some time, he came out and explained that there were too many branches and vines in the cave, which prevented passage. The beast is fast asleep and this is an ideal situation for them to attack the panther. The chances of success are high. We need to move forward right now. Tian Chen's people watching the team were excited that the group wanted to enter, but Dinger ordered them to wait. He wanted to take revenge on Liu Yi for his downfall. One of his men saw a demonic beast in the sky. Dean ordered them to sit still, because they were not sure that the beast would fall on them. After the beast approached, Dean noticed his father on the harpy. He was stunned and did not understand how his father managed to subdue the demonic beast. Tian Chen ignored the question and asked where the group went. Dean replied that they were in a cave. Tian Chen demanded to prepare a trap at the entrance to the cave. He explained that they needed to separate Lo from the others as well. Meanwhile, the third team was implementing Lu Yu's plan. Lu Yu started distracting the Night Panther. Waking up, the beast rushed at the man, which was the signal for the rest of the team. The participants who cultivated the tide technique slowed down the monster and surrounded it with ice walls. At the same time, the slowed-down animal was fixed by the roots of plants that had sprouted through the ice. The two masters rushed to the beast to finish the plan. But something went wrong and the beast escaped from the grip of the roots technique and was able to avoid the blow of one of their sword masters. Liu Yu realized that this was the perfect moment for a winning strike. Liu Yu came close to the panther, raising his sword for the last blow, but he heard the sound of a winged beast. If the second beast appears in the cave, the speed and reaction of the night panther will increase. The panther was able to dodge Liu Yu's punch. The latter, having assessed the situation, ordered the group to quickly leave the cave. The harpy appeared too suddenly and at the most inopportune moment. 
The third team was running towards the exit, but they noticed Luo Ding and Liu Hao near the entrance. Liu Yu asked them if they had attracted the flying beast to the cave. However, Liu Hao explained that they tried to hunt for the harpy, but did not calculate their strength and decided to hide in a cave. Liu Yu doubted their words and asked why the harpy nest was not marked on the map. The question remained unanswered as the Black Panther came out of the cave. Her body was enveloped in energy and in a leap she attacked the people standing at the entrance. Liu Yu tried to repel the attack by shifting his energy into the sword and launching a counterattack. Two opposing energies came together in battle and neither wanted to give in. Suddenly, a small stone stake formed between Liu Yu and the panther, which caused severe damage to the panther. Liu Ding assured that his team would help keep the panther. In addition, he offered to lure the harpy to another place, since both beasts are too strong for them. Liu Yu agreed. Liu Xing took the harpy's distraction on himself. Three more people ran with him. He asked them to hold the panther for ten breaths so that they could lure the harpy to another place. At this time, Liu thought that the harpy nest could not have been unmarked on the map. How are the people who followed him involved in this? Who are they trying to kill? Liu Yu or Liu Bin? Thoughts were interrupted by a huge shadow hanging over them. Liu Xing ordered everyone to scatter in different directions and run to the trees to lure the harpy. They must not let the panther and the harpy unite. Liu Yi saw a harpy fly over Liu Hao, but did not grab him. Liu Yi realized that the demonic beast was under someone's control. The person trying to kill Liu Yi spent a lot of money for this effect. I wonder who is behind this, Luo Tian Chen or Luo Tian Zing. Running is useless against the harpy. If Tian Zing is behind everything, then Luo Yi can use lightning steps to escape, but if Tian Chen is behind it, then he can defeat him in battle. Meanwhile, Luo Tian Chen saw that Luo Yi was left alone and mentally told him to prepare for death. He sent a mental order to the harpy for the latter to attack Liu Yi, after which the demonic beast swooped down, dropping to the ground right in front of the ready-to-fight Liu Yi. He had a sword in his hands, and his eyes were full of determination. He saw his uncle on the harpy 12, but he was calm. Liu Tian Chen guessed Liu Yi's foresight, who understood Tian Chen's purpose. Liu Yi confirmed his guesses, told about how much effort his uncle had to spend to share Liu Yi with the team, as well as what a lot of money it cost to control the harpy. Tian Chen praised Liu Yi for his shrewdness, even predicted a great future for him that would not come. He asked not to blame his uncle for the fact that Liu Yi would not be able to survive. Liu Yi did not listen to Tian Chen and was the first to strike with his kai directed through the sword towards the harpy. From the blow, the harpy leaned back and froze forever like an ice statue. Tian Chen stared at the bird in the ice in shock. He had no idea that Liu was both so fast and strong. He was clearly not at the middle stage of the fifth stage. By a miracle, he himself did not fall under the blow of Liu Ai deciding to attack. Tian Chen concentrated his energy in the sword. Tian Chen, with the help of his energy concentrated in the sword, split the ice restraining the harpy, but the latter did not rise into the sky, but fell like a stone to the ground. Tian Chen thought that if Liu was able to kill a demonic beast at the peak of the seventh rank, then Liu himself was at least at the eighth stage. It couldn't be. Meanwhile, Liu Yi, concentrating the water technique inside the sword, attacked the thinking Tian Chen. The latter, drawing his sword, jumped back and sent his light energy towards Liu Yi. Water energy and light energy converged together, causing an explosion, the shock wave of which threw Liu Yi and Tian Chen on different sides. Tian Chen quickly got his bearings and approached Liu Yi. He was well aware that he should not give Liu Yi a chance to attack. Liu Yi turned over in the air and pointed his sword towards Tian Chen, thereby showing his readiness for battle. Tian Chen was offended that he was spending so much power on some 16-year-old boy. Standing in a fighting pose and raising the sword high above his head, Tian Chen concentrated Kai in the sword. With the naked eye, it could be seen how pure and powerful energy flowed around his body. He blocked Liu Yi's sudden strike. Tian Chen understood that the boy should not survive. Tian Chen struck a terrifying blow at Liu Yi, but the latter was able to block it with his weapon. Sparks flew from the grinding of metal on metal. Their weapons could not physically withstand being filled with such a huge amount of Kai. Both realized with horror that their swords were crumbling. Tian Chen was furious that the boy could repel a blow of such force. Jumping back, Tian Chen sent a pillar of fiery light towards Liu Yi, but the latter was able to deflect. It just couldn't be. What is this technique? Liu Yi used the lightning steps technique to avoid Tian Chen's strike and deliver the final attack himself. Tian Chen's body fell to the ground. Liu Yi deduced from the battle that it was not worth standing face to face with an expert when using lightning steps. He needed to get out as soon as possible before the blood attracted other demonic beasts. Walking up to Tian Chen Liu and took his sword, as his was finally broken. After searching the body, Liu Yi found a scroll with the scripture of the five-star shadow sword technique, as well as a spirit-taming technique with a pill of similar action. Liu Yi made a decision for himself not to return to the family yet, as Liu Tian Zion would quickly understand who was to blame. Liu Yi is not able to stand up for himself in case of an attack. 
Liu Tianxing listened to the report from the servant. Information about Tian Chen was never received. Young Master Luo Ding's team returned six days later, but they didn't know anything about Tian Chen. Tian Xing asked if the third group had returned. The servant replied that they had returned two days ago, but Luo was not with them. Then Tian Xing ordered to search more carefully for information about Tian Chen and immediately report it to him. He was worried about the absence of the twelfth brother. The whole task couldn't have gone downhill, because Luo Yi is much weaker than Tian Chen. Six months later, all this time, Liu Yi was on the cloud stream and perfected his techniques. Liu Yi was able to reach the ninth stage of the Tide Technique. At this stage, he could use the Thunder Step Technique about six times. It's time to try out new abilities and control over Kai. After training, he decided to take the Tiger Dragon Pill to advance to the next level. He intended to correct a mistake six months ago. To do this, he went to the cave in the Night Panther alone. A demonic beast came out to meet him. His eyes glowed with overflowing energy. To distract the beast, Liu Yi filled the stone with his energy and forcefully kicked towards the animal. The panther was distracted from Liu Yi, jumping to the side to avoid being hit. Liu Yi immediately struck the panther's body with his sword, plunging the animal into an eternal ice prison. Liu Yi understood that the five elements of the air blade technique, although far from the ice sword technique, but its power should definitely not be underestimated. He was distracted from his thoughts by a scream coming from the entrance to the cave. Liu Yi hurried out of the cave. Walking towards the noise, he saw that a huge demonic mantis had harmed four people. There are people of the Liuo family and the Song family around. The eternal quarrels of families could not ignore them. The Liuo family wondered what the Song family needed from them, because they had given them the mantis. The representative of the Song family replied that they needed the heads of the Liuo family more than the mantis' head. After these words, the Liuo family, armed with swords, went on the attack. They supported the brawl and also drew swords, rushed into battle. Watching from behind the bushes, Liu Yi understood that the Liuo family had nothing to do with him, but he remembered how the leader of the 11th team cured Sister Bin, so he felt due. He decided to intervene in the fight without revealing his identity. Surrounded by enemies, the representatives of the Liuo family were surprised that a stranger in a cloak covering his face appeared in front of them in the blink of an eye. He was able to defeat the representatives of the Song family with one technique, lifting them into the air with blows. He froze the opponent's bodies with the help of the Tide Technique. The Luo family was shocked by such power. Representatives of the Luo family began to thank Liu Yi warmly, although they understood that the latter wanted to remain anonymous. Liu Yi disappeared from sight after their words. Representatives of the family discussed for a long time who the mysterious savior was. After the fight, Liu Yi returned to his parking spot. He planned to absorb the Tiger Dragon Pill, which could increase the cultivation level. He had originally planned to absorb it at the peak of the ninth level, but the plans changed. In two months, he should return to the Luo family and meet Luo Chamba, who is at the peak of the tenth level. Although Luo did not expect all the effects of the pill, he hoped that it would help him achieve the desired result. After absorbing the pill, Luo Yi's energy began to increase. The Kai was so great that it froze the walls of the cave without using any technique. Luo Yi felt the pain from the tightness of the meridians inside his body. From the moment of absorption of the pill to the level increase, it should take six months. But then why did Liu Yi immediately go from the initial stage of the ninth level to the middle? We will have to wait for the transition to the next level and restore the meridian's damage due to the pill. In a couple of days, there is a month left before returning to the Liuo family. Liu Yi decided to take revenge on the first team that helped Luo Tian Chen attack him, standing on a tree. He watched the tent in which the first team was located. At this time, the team was asking Luo Ding if there was any news about his father, Tian Chen. But Luo Ding didn't answer, as he was at Tian Zeng's. The latter explained that Tian Chen had been gone for six months. So he believed that the latter was already gone. Dean didn't want to believe it. The father's body has not been found yet, so he could still be alive. The team supported him because they considered the twelfth uncle to be a strong master. Liu Yi found out that the team's last mission would be to defeat the Stage 8 Drill Rat. Liu Yi just needs to wait for the group to leave the camp and go to the depths of the island. Liu Tianzing's second son was also in the first group, but Luo didn't see him after that day. He assumed that Tianzing had transferred his son, but he couldn't find out that Luo Yi would defeat Tian Chen. A strange decision. Liu Ding warned his comrades to be careful, as there is a bloodthirsty weasel's lair ahead. You can't attract her attention. Liu Hao asked when they could get to the drill rat. Liu Ding explained that they would need about 10 days. Liu Hao whimsically remarked that he would like to finish the mission as soon as possible and return home already. Liu Ding only angrily remarked that the demonic beast of the 8th rank and should not be treated lightly. He thought to himself that Liu Hao was too unpleasant a person. Liu Hao laughed and angrily remarked that he did not need to be compared for the idiot Liu. It's only a stupid Binian who can get injured by a monster. 
although she deserved it, because she dared to refuse Luo Hao himself and deserved punishment. Luo Ding got angry. He wanted to tell Luo Hao everything he thought, but he didn't have time. Liu Yi appeared from behind with great speed. Liu Ding only managed to warn about the danger from behind and push Liu Hao away. The careless Liu Hao didn't even realize the danger he was in and was only shouting about his high status in anger. Meanwhile, Liu Yi dealt with the other members of the first team with a sword in front of Liu Hao and Liu Ding. Liu Ding needed only one glance to recognize the sword. It's him, his father's sword. Liu Yi only grinned, but no one saw his grin through the cloak hiding his face. He confirmed that the sword is good and really belongs to the twelfth uncle. After saying these words, Liu Yi took off his hood, revealing his identity. Liu Hao and Liu Ding were terrified, as they believed that Tian Chen should have killed Liu Yi. In a voice full of hatred, Liu Ding asked if Liu Yi had really killed his father. Liu Yi noticed that for the first time he was being looked at with a look full of hatred. He has never been a bad person, but he must avenge the attempt on his life. Out loud, Liu Yi confirmed that Tian Chen had fallen by his hand. And now it's the turn of these two. The power of hatred filled Luo Ding's body with energy. He shouted that he would avenge his father and rushed into battle. Energy swirled around him, overflowing with anger. He tried to attack Liu Yi with his earth technique, but was too slow. Liu Yi dodged every blow with the lightning step technique. Then Liu Ding drew his sword and jumped towards Liu Yi Sekunda. Liu Yi, catching his breath in an instant, was in front, leaving Liu Ding behind. Liu Ding froze. The sword fell out of his weakened hands. The body folded in half and fell dead. Standing in front of Liu's body and thinking about it, even knowing that his father had lost to him, Liu Ding was still trying to get revenge. This is admirable. However, he is not the only one who should be punished. Liu Yi turned to Liu Hao and said, 17th brother, it's your turn. Liu Hao tried to reason with Liu Yi, shouting about whether the latter understood what he was doing. Liu Yi replied with a grin that he wanted to demonstrate his strength to the 17th brother. At the same time, he formed a large energy clot in his hand. Liu Hao begged, asked to let him go home. He promised to do anything. Liu Yi contemptuously remarked how such a greedy and pathetic person could be Tan Ba's son. Liu Hao tried to object, but when he met the furious gaze, he fell silent. His eyes filled with tears, and he began to apologize. Liu Yi had the thought that it was a pity to kill such a pathetic and cowardly person, because it was absolutely no fun. Liu Yi concentrated the Kai energy in the sword and struck. The latter tried to repel with his strength, but realized that it was useless. Liu Yi was too strong. However, the unknown power of the sword helped repel Liu Yi's blow and threw him back. If Luo was below the ninth rank, he would surely have disappeared. Liu Yi realized that Luo Hao was helped by the dominating energy of the sword. She must have been given to save her son's life. But that's not a problem. As long as Luo Yi is careful, he will be able to defeat Luo Hao regardless of how many more blows his sword can make. Luo Chanba learns the pain of losing a child. Luo Yi began to strike, cutting the air with Kai energy. Liu Hao warned that Liu Chanba would never let Liu Yi go. The latter doesn't care about Liu Hao's words. The concentration of energy inside Liu Yi's body was so great that even his eyes were blazing with Kai. He dealt Liu Hao the last blow of his life. Liu Hao fell to the ground. Lo and dropping the bodies of the first team decided that a bloodthirsty weasel, whose lair is nearby, would get rid of them. He wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for the desire of the first team to harm him. It's their own fault. A couple of days later, Tan Zing was furious. He was informed that the remains of the first team were found in the lair of the bloodthirsty weasel, along with the remains of the weasel. Tian Zing hissed. What does the informant mean? Was the whole first team devoured by a bloodthirsty weasel, and then she herself died of wounds? It can't be, since Liu Ding wasn't stupid enough to wander into the monster's lair. Surely someone else had a hand in this, and then left work for the living monsters. So it turned out to be a mock battle with a bloodthirsty weasel. If the unknown person really pulled this off, then his strength must be extremely large. However, what's the point of covering his tracks if he's really that strong? Tian Zing ordered the informants to come out, as he had to think about the situation. He also ordered not to search for information about the first team. Liu Tian Zing, closing his eyes, pondered that the disappearance of Tian Chen, the murder of the first team of Liu Ding and Liu Hao, it all started with a plan to besiege Liu Yi. Liu Yi couldn't stay alive, but the third group found his sword and Liu Yi's level did not allow him to fight Tian Chen on equal terms. So, maybe Liu was hiding his true strength or someone powerful is behind him. If Liu is alive, then he should not return to the Liu family. Tian Xing opened his eyes, which were glowing with golden energy. Liu Yi, being at the top of the slope, was training. The foot of the mountain was covered with ice. Liu himself performed rhythmic movements with a sword. Calmly observing the rhythm, Liu Yi gradually increased his rank. The energy around him rose up in a huge blue foot and sword into the sky, filling the sword in Liu Yi's hands with power. 
He was finally able to achieve this. The energy was concentrated on the tip of the sword. He spent a lot of time practicing with his sword and body, which helped him adapt to the new level. The tide technique is an attribute of water. Everyone knows that water itself has three states, gaseous, liquid and solid. Everyone thought that the strongest tide technique was the ice form. But this is wrong. Waves of the sea that fly back and forth. The water rises and takes the form of a strong wave. The strength of liquid water is the same, but the power is different. What can resist the attacks of giant waves in this world, which are getting stronger and stronger over and over again? Liu Yu will need a little more time and, being at the ninth stage, he will be able to challenge Tian Zing, who is at the peak of the tenth stage. Two months later, end of the year, Tian Zing performed in front of the masters who passed the test. He announced that the Liu family took only the third place, for which they received the Autumn Water Sword, Tiger Soul Sword, Medical Spiritual Pill No. 1 Rank, Kai Collection Pill of the First Rank. These weapons are of the fourth rank of the Heavenly and Earthly Longsword. They are very difficult to find. Most of the elders of the family own similar swords. As for the Kai Collection Pill, everyone can get it. Liu Xing remarked that he would also like to get a pill to collect Kai to move from the sixth to the seventh rank. Liu Yu promised to give him the pill if their team got it. In the distance, someone saw a lonely silhouette slowly walking. Chan Xing immediately recognized him as Luo. He couldn't believe how the latter had survived. He urged to wait for the award and hurried to meet Luo. Chan Xing could not believe that Chan Chen, Luo Ding and Luo Hao could find their end of life at the hands of Luo. If this is indeed the case, then Luo's strength should be. But before he could think of it, Luo Yi fell face down on the ground. Tian Chen assessed Luo Yi's condition. There is almost no breathing, the wounds are real. How could he get such wounds? Luo couldn't fool him either, and get such injuries from monsters on purpose. No, Lo and just a boy, he couldn't deceive him. Liu Yi was lucky to escape from the clutches of death and even more lucky to survive after returning to the Luo estate. Chan Xing picked up Liu Yi, carrying him towards the infirmary. Liu Yi was glad that so many students were looking at them, which made Tian Xing unable to do anything to him. Everything is going according to his plan. At the camp, Liu Yi was met by an alarmed Binyan, Lu Yun and Liu Xing. They immediately rushed to help, simultaneously asking about the state of health and about what happened. Liu Yu turned to Chan Xing with a request to take Liu Yi for treatment. He was allowed to do it. Lo and the third team could not leave even in the hospital. They asked if everything would be fine with Luo and Master Pei, who was engaged in treatment. The master reported that Luo Yi was fine. He just lost a lot of blood and fell into a coma. The young body recovers quickly and in a couple of days he will be absolutely healthy. Lu Yu noticed an oddity. Binion was injured at the beginning of their training, and now Luo Yi. He was wondering where Luo was in all this time. After a year of training on the island, the members of the Lo family return home. A third team was walking along the pier. Liu Xing was carrying Liu Yi, who had recently woken up. Xing immediately asked where Lo Yi had been for seven months and how he had received his wounds. Liu Yi explained that because of the purple bird while running, he got lost and got lost in the forest. He had to fight a lot of monsters, thanks to which he managed to return. Liu Yi noticed that Liu Yi had been searched for dozens of miles, but could not find him. Xing also expressed bewilderment, but their conversations were interrupted by Binion who cut off with the words, if everything is fine with Liu, then everything is fine. She was supported by Sing that as long as he was alive, nothing else mattered. Liu Yu understood that Liu Yi had no reason to lie, but none of the third group returned, and the third uncle did not react to this in any way. It was as if he knew that there would be no first group, already in the cabin of the ship. While on the way home, Liu Yi also continued to train his techniques. Liu Yi was surprised to notice that ordinary swords couldn't be compared to earth and heaven rank items such a sword that belonged to Tian Chen Liu and threw into the sea. Liu Yi concentrated the energy in the sword, and then directed it in the direction he needed. After several months of practicing with the sword, he was able to achieve the rhythmic superposition technique. With this technique and lightning fast step, Liu Chanba will not be able to resist Liu Yi. A month later, Pier Dancha, the largest pier in Tandu Prefecture, Liu San was waiting for the arrival of the ship with the newcomers, which should return back today. The passengers of the ship were also glad to arrive home after a month of wandering the seas. Liu San was worried. The third master sent him a letter saying that Liu Yi was alive. Seeing Liu Yi smiling with his own eyes, Xiao Sen only pressed his lips together in annoyance. Let Lo and smile on while he can. Liu San was informed that the third master had arrived. Therefore, the instructor met Tian Xing. Tian Xing noticed with annoyance that Luo Sen had become too arrogant and began to forget his place. How dare he disrespect Luo Tian Xing by watching Luo Yi in his presence. Luo Yi was thinking that Luo Sen was Luo Chanba's dog. Because Luo Yi has returned, everyone is in danger. He needs to move in with Aunt Chun. Luo Yi invited the third team to have fun in the city. 
Singh and Liu agreed that after so much training, rest is necessary. After that, the team escorted Lo home. Then Yun said she was coming to dinner. After saying goodbye to his friends, Liu Yi headed home, thinking about what Aunt Chun was doing. Knocking on the door, he heard a man's voice. Liu Yi opened the door and saw Liu Liang in a robe covering his head. Liu Liang was alarmed and did not believe that the young master had returned home. Liu Yi noticed the traces of blood and angrily asked where Aunt Chun was. Liu Liang couldn't answer anything. Due to anger, the force burst out of Liu Yi's body in an uncontrollable flow and tore down the door and some furniture in the room, raising dust. As soon as the dust settled, Liu Yi saw his aunt in a wheelchair. He fell to his knees in front of her in shock from what he saw. Aunt Chun tried to soften the news and told how glad she was that the young master had returned safely. Liu Yi didn't fall for the tricks and asked what happened. Without waiting for an answer, Liu Yi jumped to his feet, but Aunt Chun stopped him. She asked him not to do anything stupid, because she's fine. Liu Yi objected that she was still far from being fine. He began to calm her down. He found a special point on his neck that helps a person to fall asleep, and pressed it. Aunt Chun fell asleep, and Liu Yi carried her to the bed, carefully covering her with a blanket. Liu Yi, filled with righteous anger, demanded from Luo Ziang to answer who did this to Aunt Chun. His answer was Lo San. Liu Yi asked when it happened. Liu Ziang explained that about a month ago, Liu San came and tried to kill Aunt Chun. Only when he saw the lady, he attacked her without words. Liu Yi remembered that it was a month ago that Tian Xing sent a letter to Liu San saying that Liu Yi was still alive. So Lo San wanted to destroy what low and important and expensive. Liu Ziang fell to his knees and begged for forgiveness because he could not protect her. Liu Yi calmed him down and lifted him off his knees. He still wouldn't be able to do anything. Liu Ziang said that Chun's leg was broken and her health was shaken. The cup of patience has overflowed and now Tian Xing and Liu San will pay dearly for their mistakes. Liu Yi instructed Liu Ziang to take care of his aunt while he left the house. Liu thought that they forced him to play scary games. However, this game would be more interesting. While at home, Liu San was thinking out loud that Liu Yi had probably already been home. Will he come to him? Liu San admitted that he was too worried. There is no reason for this, because one person gave him the Dao Soul Seals. Anyway, Liu San has decided that he won't even leave bones from Lo Yi, no matter if the last one comes or not. His thoughts were interrupted by a piece of the destroyed wall that fell not far from Liu San. The latter was waiting for Liu Yi's arrival, so he grabbed his sword from the table closest to him. Liu Yi stabbed Liu San. Liu San fell to the ground from the impact. Liu Yi slowly walked over to Liu San who was lying on the ground. Tai energy swirled around him. He indifferently raised the tip of the sword over Liu San, filling him with energy. Liu San continued to swear and Liu Yi struck out. Liu San was able to deflect the blow with his energy. However, the energy grew and threw Lo in back. After the energy dissipated, Liu Yi saw Tianbu. He praised his nephew. Liu Yi also admitted that he was impressed by Tianbu's strength. Two colossal energies stood opposite each other. Liu San, who was at the feet of the third uncle, begging him to help kill Liu Yi Luo and understood why Liu San was so arrogant, because his uncle gave him three protective amulets, and also personally came to save him. Tianba advised Liu San to rest, and then turned to Liu Yi, why he was not surprised by what had happened. Did Lo know everything? Liu Yi only explained that the Luo family is the strongest and power rules in it, so there is nothing to be surprised about. Tianba admitted that he underestimated Liu Yi. He chuckled and said out loud that there was a strong man behind Liu Yi's back and he inherited his strength. Liu Yi suggested that he check for a patron and not be cautious anymore. Tianba only replied that for his son and Liu San, Liu Yi should pay with his life. Liu Yi noticed that his uncle was indeed stronger than him, but he would not be able to win. Tianba only grinned and doubted Liu Yi's capabilities. The latter at that time attacked Tianba first, but the latter was able to deviate. He concentrated the fiery Kai in his palms and directed it towards Liu Yi. But his energy was met by Liu Yi's tide technique. Tianba said that Liu Yi was too weak to fight him. Then Liu Yi used five elements of aerial combat equipment. Tianba recognized the technique, but could not understand why the blow was so strong. He tried to fight off the energy, but each time the attacks were stronger and stronger. Then he used all his might, directing the fire technique at Liu Yi, hurting the latter. Liu Yi understood that he needed to become stronger in order to continue fighting at the same level. Now, after the battle with Tianba, he won't be able to stay at Liu Manor. Tianba continued to strike at Liu Yi, saying that today was the last day of his life. Lo and defended himself. He was afraid that if Tianba won, he would harm Aunt Chun. Tianbo, confident of his victory, struck Liu in a series of blows. He was sure that Liu Yi would not be able to avoid the attack. Liu Yi was able to avoid injury due to the fact that he used the lightning step technique. He noticed with regret that there was an energy trace left after the techniques. They might catch him on this trail. If he had been full of strength, he would have been able to escape, but the fight with Luo Sen weakened him. 
Tamba suggested that Liu Yi spare their time and give up, because the latter would not be able to escape from his uncle. Liu Yi ignored the enemy's words. He understood that he could only use the lightning step technique twice. He needs to focus. By concentrating Kai in his legs, Liu Yi was able to apply the technique. Tamba only sighed irritably. This battle is pointless. Tamba used the lightning step technique, catching up with Liu Yi, who was trying to escape with his last strength. Liu Yi landed on the edge of a bottomless pit. After him, Tamba also sank to the ground. He chuckled, even the gods are not on the side of garbage. He struck with a fiery shot at Liu Yi's back, which the latter was able to avoid. But this is what Tamba was waiting for. After all, the blow was supposed to destroy the end of the cliff so that Liu Yi fell into the abyss. Tamba repeatedly attacked Liu Yi, who was already flying down, but the latter was able to gather the last grains of energy and fight back. Tamba noticed, Liu and in despair, the cliff is too deep and the boy has no chance of survival. Liu Yi tried to use the rhythm technique of the Blue Rain Sword. He was trying to confuse Tanbu and hide Liu Yi's flight from view. He was well aware that the Tanba energy had touched his internal organs, and the last technique had used up all his Kai energy. No, he wasn't ready to give up. A spherical ball of Kai energy formed around him. Tanba realized that this was an innate intention technique. He was stunned. Once upon a time, Tan Feng learned the technique before Tanba himself, and now his offspring was able to do it. Again, he pulled himself away. Liu Yi continued to fall. It doesn't matter when they learned the technique. The only important thing is that in the next world they won't need it. He laughed. Liu Yi mused that Tanba thought this was his last flight. But, unfortunately, Tanba, Liu has already been on this cliff. He knew that there were vines spread out inside. Alan needed to grab onto one of them to keep himself alive. The wounds brought him unbearable suffering, but he fought. He wanted to live. Liu Yi felt someone's gaze on him and turning back, he saw a huge eye shining with a red light. Wrapped in a vine, a demonic serpent was approaching Liu Yi. The man was frantically thinking about what he needed to do, because he did not want to become a dinner for the beast. While the snake was preparing to attack Lo and remembered that he had a pseudo-royal elixir, it helps to control the mind of demonic beasts. It is only necessary for the beast to swallow the pill. Liu Yi got ready and waited for the snake's mouth to open to eat Liu Yi, but the latter managed to throw a pill inside. He was surprised to see that it worked. Then he applied the control technique. Yes, his Kai was at zero, but he wanted to live too much. Now the technique was sucking out Luo Yi's spiritual power. The boy ordered the monster to take him to the lair. The animal happily began to fulfill his wish. The tip of the tail wrapped around Luo Yi's body, and then the man felt a discharge through his body. This is the energy of the snake flowing in the body, preparing to throw into the abyss, to the lair of the beast. In such uncomfortable conditions, he spent some time until he reached the snake's nest. After that, Luo Yi ordered the demonic beast to bring some food and then watched the huge body disappear into the cave opening. Liu Yi wanted to recover faster, he couldn't stay in one place for a long time. Too dangerous. He tried to train the tide technique again from the first stage in order to strengthen the Kai. The training was interrupted by the returning beast, which brought a carcass of some small animal in its mouth. Liu Yi thought he could control the animal and restore his energy using the elixir. Too much UAV power is contained in it. While eating the cooked carcass, Liu was thinking, when the power of the elixir runs out, the beast will be aggressive towards the controller. The strength of the pill will last for about three hours, after which he must escape from the lair if he does not want to become a snack. He just hoped that the lair was not high and he would just be able to escape through the entrance. Liu Yi ordered the demonic beast to walk away. The latter obeyed and with all his usual speed rushed down the stone. Liu Yi understood that if the vines had saved his life earlier, now if the beast tore them, he would not be able to get out of the cave. Suddenly, the cry of a firebird rang out in the sky. She swooped down and grabbed the snake's body with her claws. It was amazing. The chance was extremely small. Although, if you think about it, it is quite logical. The lower he descends, the further away he is from the Liu family and the more monsters appear. It's too dangerous outside. There may be monsters there that are superior to Lo and in strength. He decided to find a secluded place and continue training to regain strength. Liu Yi wandered inside the cave, trying to find a safe place. Suddenly, he saw a light that came from the depths of the cave. Liu Yi began to approach, preparing to attack, but this was only an exit. He came out of the lair and a huge underground lake full of pure water spread out before his eyes. In the middle of the lake was a white lotus of incredible beauty. The lotus illuminated the entire recess like a flashlight. Liu Yi stared at the flower in amazement. Although the place is located deep in the mountains, and it's night outside, but the flower continues to shine like moonlight. He decided to explore the lotus. Already moving towards the flower, he saw a snake in the ice with his peripheral vision. Liu Yi realized that the beast froze only after touching the water. 
With his water-style stage, Liu Yi wouldn't be able to walk harmlessly on the lake surface. He would just turn into a local ice sculpture. Finding this plant in such a strange place was extraordinary. He decided to return to this place after recuperating and check. Lo and transgressed to training. Meanwhile, in the house of the Lo family, the patriarch was angry. Indignation is caused by the fact that the head of the family was called ahead of time. In the circle of elders, Chanba informed the head that he had killed the traitor Liu Yi. The patriarch was surprised. Was Liu Yi really that dangerous? Was this message really worth it for the head of the family to return ahead of time? Chamba began the story of how Liu Yi attacked Liu San, who is an elder, for no reason and maimed him. Chamba bravely came to the defense of Liu San, but the mad Liu also attacked him. Liu Yi was dangerous, so he decided to get rid of the boy. Liu Yi broke the family law, and no one dares to break them. Chamba insisted that he followed the family rules and everyone in his place should have done the same. Family should come first. Then Chamba bowed his head in reverence and left his fate to the will of the patriarch. He was ready to endure punishment or demotion if the head considered his actions illegal. Anger bubbled inside the head. Family law. Nonsense. How dare Chamba kill his grandson? How dare all the elders treat his family like that? But at the same time, he understood that it was impossible to kill Liu Chanbu, since his father would challenge him and the family would begin to collapse. He is the head of the Liu family and cannot allow civil strife for the sake of his family. He must restrain his emotions. He mentally asked Liu Yi to wait. Grandpa would definitely avenge him. Out loud, he said that Chanba was right. Family laws are absolute in total. No one dares to violate them, even the grandchildren of the head. With that, he asked to finish and move on to the discussion of the annual festival. Chanba just grinned. He was well aware that the patriarch knows the situation and understands that his father will stand up for the Chanba. Five days later, Liu Yi trained hard, strengthening his kai. Thanks to the healing properties of the tide technique, he has almost healed his body, and the damaged meridians are healing. There is very little time left. True Kai is imperfect, so it needs to be treated with medication. On his own, Liu Yi was able to regain strength only from the 6th to the 7th stage. Liu Yi returned to the unusual place in the cave, although he didn't know what the strength of the beast in the ice was. But he understood that his huge body froze in a matter of seconds. Even if Liu Yi practices water techniques himself, he still won't be able to withstand such a cold. Perhaps, using lightning steps, Liu will be able to cross the lake, but the danger may lurk in the flower itself. Perhaps it has the same power as water. The light illuminating the lotus also confused Liu Yi, because it appeared out of nowhere. Lo M's thoughts slowly flowed into another channel. He understood that it was impossible to fight with Chamba now. It is necessary to achieve, at least, the innate kingdom and only after it to challenge the uncle. Perhaps the fact that he got into this cave will help him and he will be able to find something worthwhile. If it is not possible to pass through the lake, then you will have to climb through the entrance to the cave. The lake is hundreds of meters from the entrance. Liu Yi began to return to the hole through which he and the demonic beast had entered the cave. After coming to the surface, Liu Yi moved along the walls and vines with the help of energy. At some point, he heard a noise characteristic of monkeys and was surprised. He followed the noise and saw a flock of demonic monkeys in the thicket of vines. They were weak, but there were too many of them, so Liu decided to avoid them. But his gaze caught on a huge opening in the mountain. This could be the road to the mountainside. Liu Yi began to think quickly about how to lure out the beasts, but a fiery bird flew overhead. Liu Yi hid behind a vine and began to watch as the monster began to devour the monkeys. The survivors scattered in different directions. Having found the best moment, Lo and rushed towards the opening in the rock, trying not to get in the eyes of the animals. Entering the opening, Liu realized that although the connector looked big, it was mostly occupied by the monkey's lair. Disappointed, he realized that the cave did not lead to the mountainside and was about to leave, but he noticed the monkey. Approaching her, he realized that the animal was drunk. This monkey is different, which is why Lo decided that she is the king of the pack. Liu Yi couldn't understand how the king could sleep while his followers were being chased by a bird. While examining the beast, Liu Yi noticed a cup in her paw and there was some liquid inside. The boy thought it was wine. According to legend, monkey wine is made from the fruits of the legendary fruit, which is brewed in water from mountain springs. Lo Yi wondered what such a drink tasted like. Reaching for the cup, Liu jumped back on his reflexes alone. At that moment, the monkey struck at the place where Liu Yi should have been. The impact was so strong that it destroyed the top layer of the earth, and the energy released by the monkey king enveloped the entire cave. Liu Yi jumped back again, as the monkey concentrated the fiery energy in his paw and rushed towards the man. Liu Yi tried to block the blow with his kai, but he couldn't and flew back. Liu Yi understood that the monkey was strong, even though it relied only on true kai. Where does such power come from? He was not given much time to think, as they began a series of attacks. The man decided to test the strength and strength of the animal's body for himself. 
To do this, he used the cloud destruction technique in battle, spending too much energy. The Monkey King was unharmed. Liu Yi was surprised, because his technique was capable of killing an expert of the 8th rank. Is the beast body as strong as its bones? The monkey froze and watched the man. Liu Yi decided that she just didn't want to make unnecessary movements. Is this the natural talent of the beast? Or is there another reason for such strength? Liu Yi started to move towards the stone tablet that was lying horizontally on a small rise. And at that moment the monkey king became agitated and tried to attack again. Liu Yi assumed that the power of the beast was contained in this tablet. Liu Yi pushed the animal back with the annihilation technique and quickly pointed his palm full of energy at the stone. He warned the aggressive beast that if he approached, the man would break the sign. The monkey instantly subdued its energy and admitted defeat with all its appearance. Liu Yi took the tablet in his hands and realized that it was a lid that covered a container of wine. Did the monkey king become so strong because of wine? The monkey king offered to drink wine from his cup. But as soon as Liu Yi reached for it, the beast pushed him away and drank all the contents. The man became furious. He hated being fooled. The animal began to attack. Liu Yi noticed that the monkey's strength and speed increased after the drink. Counterattacking Liu Yi used the blue rain sword technique and realized that it was time. Liu Yi pierced through the monkey's body, causing the beast to be covered with an icy crust. Liu Yi defeated the beast, but regretfully thought that the stupid animal did not understand the true value of wine. The man was inspired to find monkey wine with its beneficial effects. Liu Yi heard a noise from the cave entrance and realized that other monkeys would come soon. He needs to get out of the cave as soon as possible, because he has already found something that will be useful to him in the future, monkey wine. He planned to return to a quiet place and start absorbing wine to gain more strength. Liu Yi froze the liquid, the resulting ice ball he covered with his jacket and headed towards a safe place. For himself, he decided that after regaining his strength, he would find out the reason for the strange light. Returning to his cave, Liu Yi broke the ice ball into several small pieces and began absorbing. He instantly felt the burning of his whole body, but there was no pain. Orange Liu Yi felt his body being filled with strength, and the taste of the wine was uplifting to the heaven. The body grows stronger, muscle mass increases, and energy bursts the internal organs. It was an indescribable feeling. Liu Yi was able to recover and increase his physical strength in a short time. After the surge of strength, he expected to use the lightning step about 10 times. And if he eats the remaining pieces of wine, he will be able to reach the 10th level. A couple of days later, Liu Yi spent endless practices of various techniques. At the moment, he couldn't use the lightning step infinitely much yet, but he could use the technique at least 14 times. Liu Yi understood that he could have overcome Tianba. But his father, the 13th elder and warrior of the innate realm, is too strong. It's still too early to return to the family. Only after comprehending the innate kingdom will the boy be able to return to the Liu family. But in order to achieve it in the shortest possible time, a miracle is needed. Therefore, Lo will go to investigate the cause of light. Perhaps this will be the key to increasing its level. Liu Yi decided to start exploring from above, so he started climbing the mountain. Surprisingly, he had been to mountain caves so often, but this was the first time he had climbed it. Climbing onto another ledge, Liu Yi looked around and saw the nest of a demonic bird. It was located at Jiufeng Peak. While the monsters are looking for food below, Liu managed to get up without incident. Climbing up, Liu Yi heard the cries of monkeys, but this could not be, because their nest was much lower. Besides there was a bird's nest nearby. What could they be doing here? Liu Yi watched as several monkeys climbed out of the cave, carrying some objects in their hands. Where are they going? Do they have fruit in their hands? Fruits ripen in the mountains even in winter. This can't be happening. There should be no natural gardens here. Liu Yi climbed into the cave from where the monkeys had just come out. He was thinking how useful this place was. Inside the mountain there is a yan pond with a mysterious light source in the form of a lotus. Inside the monkey cave there is wine that can increase strength. There is even a huge garden. A huge expanse covered with various plants and trees opened up in front of Liu Yi's eyes. Liu Yi could hardly believe that no one had ever been here before. But, on the other hand, if this is the work of a man, then he must be so powerful that he could reach heaven and earth. But he would think about that later. Now we need to focus on finding a light source. There is no entrance to the cave in this part, only huge fruit trees. Liu Yi had to go upstairs to find the light source. He planned to find him before the demonic beasts returned. Liu Yi saw a depression in the top of the mountain and went into it. He noticed that despite the fact that the cave was formed naturally, there are still traces of human intervention in it. Most likely it has an owner. It turns out that the monsters are just watching this place until the owner comes. It doesn't matter, you need to check what's next. Moving further along the cave, Liu Yi discovered a huge monster. His body was covered with scales, and his head had a lion-like appearance. On the tip of the tail there was a snake's head that breathed fire. 
The monster was behind a gate covered with patterns. Touching the patterns, Liu Yi was thrown back and a monster flew out of the gate. He knocked Liu Yi off his feet and pierced his body with energy. Liu Yi just didn't have time to do anything. Lo and thought what was wrong with this gate. Because of the monster that was released, his soul suffered. If it wasn't for his true Kai, he wouldn't be breathing anymore. A gate with only a few patterns could attack someone's spirit. Unthinkable. How terrible can a person who made such an item be? In any case, Liu Yi couldn't stay in this place for long. The owner could return at any moment. Liu Yi decided that he would first restore his energy and body and then come up with a plan. After that, he began to cultivate the tide technique, exploring his energy in meridians. Liu Yi was surprised to find that the blow of that monster affected him like a tiger dragon pill and helped him raise the level to the middle of the tent. Five water elements are available at the tenth level. This technique helps to condense true energy. Liu Yi decided to try out the technique immediately. To his surprise, he succeeded, and he was able to reproduce one of the strongest blows. However, Liu Yi understood that he was still weak. He needs to reach the innate realm, but now it is necessary to leave. After touching the gate, the owner should already know about Lo Ai Lo and could not return the same way he came. So he used his energy and broke through the wall of the cave, falling out. The energy that enveloped his body helped him keep his body intact. Liu Yi came out of the cave, but did not understand where to move. Aunt Chun and Binian are probably already mourning him, but he can't return to them until he reaches the innate realm. For more than a month, Liu Yi has been drinking monkey wine and practicing the blue rain sword rhythm technique. He didn't know if it would really help him reach the innate realm. Seeing the river, Liu Yi decided to follow the river down, as it should lead to Tandu. Along the way, he was going to train the rhythm to achieve the innate realm. Fifteen days later, Liu Yi trained hard and achieved a new technique that emerged from the rhythm. He called this technique Magic Snow Dance. Liu Yi finally got to Tandu. Now he was trying to figure out where to rest. His attention was attracted by the Dong Martial Academy, so he immediately went to the head of the academy. The old man first turned to Liu Yi and asked if he wanted to enter the Dong Martial Arts Academy. He decided that the person standing half a day near the gate wants to enroll. He also clarified that the admission costs two tails of silver. Liu Yi objected. He clarified that he wants to study at the academy, but not as a student, but by application. The elder was surprised and asked which section Liu Ai Liu wanted and was confused and said that he would like to be a martial arts master. The old man assessed the strength and realized that Liu Yi had already reached the third foot of cultivation. He offered to pass the law and check to start working and offered to follow him. Liu Yi agreed.